Greetings and salutations. Thanks for clicking on the video. Today we're going to take a look at Elementary OS, which is based on Ubuntu 14.04. They just came out with a new release about a month ago, but we're going to look at the one before that, and I'll tell you why as the video rolls along. Elementary OS is a minimalist desktop environment, and it kind of sort of reminds me of Mac OS X a little bit and it also kind of reminds me of GNOME 3 and it just may be the distro for those of you who like to have a desktop environment that has very little uh, chance to mess it up by changing a setting or pushing the wrong button because there's really not that much that you can do to break this and I'm actually considering at some point putting this on a machine for my kids because it is so easy to use uh, just from a uh, user's point of view. Now I don't know whether the elementary project has gotten the stability to the point where I'm ready to commit this to hardware yet but I'm starting to think maybe they have. What happened was I actually tried this OS about mm, maybe a year, year and a half ago and I liked what I saw. There were things about it that I really liked but then what happened was is that it just didn't run well it was hard to get installed I tried it on hardware the first time around and it just didn't work very well this time around when I installed it this morning into VirtualBox I was pleasantly surprised that the install process was pretty much flawless and I was able to get the VirtualBox drivers uh, into elementary with no problems whatsoever when you come to the web page here under the picture of elementary OS running on what kind of looks like a MacBook, uh, you have this option here to throw them a little cache uh, when you download the file. And some people think that this is kind of crass on their part since Linux is all open source and basically we're supposed to be giving it away for free. But the truth of the matter is that running an open source project requires funding and takes a lot of time and effort and there are expenses involved and I kind of understand where they're coming from here and they're just asking for a very modest amount, five, ten, fifteen dollars. So uh, if everybody threw them a buck every time they downloaded it, it would probably fully fund the project to tell you the truth. And all Linux distributions would appreciate a donation. Uh, I mean, if you like Linux Mint and it's your favorite distribution, throw them some cash. Uh, or the same for Ubuntu, the same for Fedora, any of them, uh, because funding is always an issue. However, like I said, some folks are like, well, they're a little too upfront with it here. Um, not really sure how I feel about it. One, one side of my brain is saying, well, yeah, they ought to make it a try it before you buy it sort of thing. Um, but then again... Uh, I can see where they're coming from. So that's about all I'm going to say about that. You don't have to actually put anything in here because over here they have a custom amount. All right. And so I just put a zero in. Uh, unfortunately, the first time that I tried to download this, I was going to get the very latest version. It didn't work for me. I clicked on this and absolutely nothing happened. It didn't do a thing, and I tried several times, and then just before I started recording this video, it started working for me. So what I ended up doing was was downloading uh, the version before this from March of this year and installing it and then updating it. So I'm not going to show you the absolute latest version, but cosmetically and functionally, there's not that much difference, and it will definitely still give you a feel for the OS. I'm kind of happy that I got that the, the earlier version because I really wanted to see what they had worked on since the last time that I did it. And like I said, it worked very well. So anyway, if you click this button and the website decides to work for you, uh, you're going to be offered a chance to download the 32-bit or the 64-bit version choose whichever works best for you. Most people will get 64, download the file and install it. The installation process is pretty much the same as Ubuntu 14.04. It appears that they use the same Ubiquiti installer and you can also uh, put this on a USB stick or a DVD and then you can play with it um, running in a live environment as well. So that's enough with the website and the preliminaries. Let's actually look at the 
the operating system itself. This is the login screen, which I think is very polished looking, and I like this. And I did drag my little file with my picture into the home folder just as I was testing the Samba network to make sure it worked. But other than that, I have made no alterations to this system whatsoever. You're going to see what it looks like when you install it, exactly what it looks like. So let's go ahead and log in and load up the desktop and the desktop fades in and this is what it looks like. So let's go ahead and full screen that. There we go. And it kind of reminds me of a cross between GNOME 3 and OS 10. And there are things about it that I like and there are things about it that I don't like. First of all, this is not an active desktop. So if you're one of those people like I am that's used to saving files to the desktop, dragging files to the desktop, creating folders on the desktop, you're not probably going to be happy with this. And I don't really see a mechanism anywhere where you can turn it back on. And maybe you can install like GNOME Tweak or something like that and make this an active desktop. But uh, I don't know. I don't have a lot of experience with this. So uh, maybe somebody who's watching this video who has more experience with elementary can tell me. But on, in certain applications, I can see where not having an active desktop would cause less confusion. So you can click on the desktop all you want and nothing happens. I'm right clicking. You can't do nothing. So in order to get into the meat and potatoes of this, we need to actually go to the Apple app applications menu. I'm going to set Appalachians like the mountains. And I do like this. Uh, I like this, how it, it, it blows up into this big balloon. we got these huge icons. It comes with a lot of custom applications installed. Uh, not only does elementary OS, you know, just put together a bunch of all pre-existing stuff, but uh, they choose different applications than you would see in a lot of distributions. It's not the standard stuff. So let's go through and take a look at it here. Um, we get, uh, let's see what we got here. First thing to look at would be files, which is actually Nautilus. And from the GNOME 3 desktop. Not bad here. Let me go ahead and unhide the files there. So that's your home folder. And you notice we don't have a desktop. There's no desktop folder in there. Let's see what web browser we get. I really have not looked around in this so we're kinda of doing this together. Uh, the web browser appears to be Midori. Am I right? Let's see. Yeah, Midori 05.11. Midori is a lightweight web browser which runs very quickly, which I like, but it's not like Firefox or Chrome in that you just don't have a great deal of plug-in support. So whether you can get any use out of Midori is going to depend on what kind of web browsing you do. Now, I do like the fact that this comes with Geary for the mail client already pre-installed because I am a fan of Geary. I actually found out about the Geary web client by trying out elementary OS. Trying to see if there's anything else to look at here. We have a software updater which is a la Ubuntu. Let's take a look at what the terminal looks like. And there's your terminal. It's an enhanced environment here. In other words, uh, I, I know that they built in some extra security features, some some prompts. I think that if you like try and add a PPA or something like that, it will double check it. I remember seeing that somewhere else, but I don't know a great deal about it, so I'm not going to comment on it much further. Uh, we have a program here called Videos. No videos open. I'm trying to figure out which one that is.
See if I can get to like an about page or something like that. I don't see anywhere to do it. So this may be one of the applications that they have uh, come up with on their own. Okay. All right, so let's see here. What else have we got under applications? We've got a calculator. Got a camera application right out of the box. Gary Mail. We've already talked about that. Let's look at music. It says get some tunes. There's nothing on this computer. Let's see here. Very minimalist settings on the preferences here for music. I don't quite know what it does. And once again, I'm not seeing an about. So this must be one of their native applications that they've adapted yet again. Looks pretty simple and basic to me, which I kind of like. And let's see what else do we need to look at here. We get um, the software center. I'm going to see if it looks exactly the same as it does in Ubuntu. Yes, it's the Ubuntu Software Center. So here's where you could add more software to the system. That's pretty groovy. Okay, uh, this is how you switch desktops down here on the plank. The dock, whatever you want to call it. I just killed a desktop. I think I added one. Okay, what am I doing here? Get back to my regular desktop. The desktop switcher is right here. So we have Midori, we have Geary. Let's look at the calendar. That's pretty straightforward. So if you use a calendar, there's one already installed. All right. Uh, what else we got here? We got the music, the video app. There's a program called Photos. Add some photos. Pretty straightforward. So they give you basically all of the, the very basics. And since this is based on Ubuntu 14.04, feel free to mix and match to your heart's content. Let's look uh, at, the, I want to look at the settings real quick. I don't think this is going to be a terribly long video simply because this is just about as basic as it gets. So let me see here, system settings. Mouse uh, tends to disappear for me. I, I prefer a white mouse over a black mouse, but somebody asked me just yesterday how to change the mouse color in Linux Mint, so there you go. All right, uh, we have applications. Okay, that's where you set your preferred applications. And let's see what we got under desktop environment here. We can set the background. Uh, let's see, let's choose a background. One, one, here's one that's a little less busy. Still kind of fits in with the theme though. Maybe a darker, no I like that, we'll leave that one the way it is. Here's where we can configure the dock a little bit. Icon size normal. And then we can set up some hot corners. That's pretty much it for the desktop. Language and region notifications. Security and privacy.
go over in there and work on some things displays that's pretty simplified there's not much information there at all printers let's look at the power settings see how close that is to Ubuntu no it's very different I kinda like it what the buttons do and whether the machine will suspend that's pretty cool they've boiled that down to make that super simple here's where you can set up some keyboard shortcuts yep that's what that's all about that's groovy because so far I haven't found any keyboard uh, shortcut setup at all so you have to do everything with the mouse sound that should be pretty I'm gonna look at that anyway I just want to see what it is yeah it's pretty straightforward don't see anything for like a screensaver option here is that under display because it will lock the screen and I don't know whether I like that or not that's probably in here somewhere sometimes they hide that in power options oh here it is turn off the screen I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off for a virtual machine and is there anything else to talk about while we're here? Let's see if I can make these fonts a little bigger. That helps a little bit to turn the uh, text size up, but it's not huge. I kind of prefer to be able to scale that in some way and not just have it where it's like large or small but this is not bad for uh, those who have visual impairments it's nice to be able to set a font size that is comfortable you know that seems to be pretty much it gang not much more to talk about at least on the surface here with elementary OS um, cannot comment on how stable it is, how well it runs over time, that sort of thing, uh, simply because of the fact that I have never used this for any long period of time. But like I said, when this installed this morning, it actually went really, really well. And this, uh, once again, is the version that came out in March of 2015. So this is actually the version before the latest version. But I'm kind of liking it, and since it's based on Ubuntu 14.04, I'm pretty sure it's going to be supported for a long, long time, at least until 2019. You might want to double-check that because I'm not entirely sure. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Click here, get the small calendar. Let's look at some other things real quick before we say goodbye. Um we can log out this this looks very much like what you have in gnome 3 power settings yeah very straightforward very simple so we can go ahead and shut this down and say goodbye to elementary OS at least for this video uh, very minimalist very straightforward kinda liking what I saw there uh, my past impressions of elementary haven't been all that great but I think they've actually made a lot of progress so kudos to them and if you're looking for a really basic minimalist distro check that out thanks for watching the video gang we'll talk again soon be sure and check out freedompenguin.com got a new article up there uh, and lots of other articles from other contributors also check out easy Linux on the web and easy Linux on Facebook give it a like if you would please We'll talk again soon. Bicycle!